Hello, this is Sean Rivers, uh, Director of Product Marketing at Bandwidth.com. This is our fourth installment of our Talk Business series. Our first three all had to do with saving money, whether through convergence or through centralization. Today's discussion is regarding quality of service or QoS. While QoS is not a classic savings technique, it is a requirement to the success of a VoIP deployment. Today we are going to talk about the challenges and best practices for deploying a VoIP solution. We will discuss what QoS is and how it is measured. We will also dive into the best practices to be employed when planning the solution from the network perspective, that's the LAN and the WAN side, as well as phone system strategies and carrier options. We will also briefly describe the Bandwidth.com offering and who Bandwidth.com is. So what is QoS? or quality of service. Quality of service is usually referenced to only encompass call clarity. But many of us in the industry are starting to understand that the customer perception of quality is not only the clarity, but the service reliability, consistency, and resilience of that service. Basically, it is the overall satisfaction of the, com of the customer. Um, these are what I'm going to focus on today when we discuss best practices. So first of all, audio clarity. Audio clarity is considered good if it is working in both directions so two sides can hear uh, without audio and clipping. This is measured by what is called a MOS score or a mean opinion score uh, which is a mathematical score between one being the worst and five being the best. An average traditional analog call for your reference is typically a range from 4.1 to 4.6 on the MOS score and a cell phone will range from 3.5 to 3.9. So that gives you an idea of your best call is typically on a cell phone has been about 3.9. A VoIP call, depending on the environment, can span the gamut, but a good uncompressed call with, will typically range between 4.0 and 4.4. Reliability. Uh, so reliability is also a measured performance metric that in a traditional world is typically scored between four to five nines. So you might hear the term four nines, you know, three nines, four nines, five nines of reliability. This is just the percentage of uptime. So uh, three nines would be nine point, you know, ninety nine point nine percent uptime, while five nines would be ninety nine point nine 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 percent of uptime. This kind of reliability in VoIP is largely dependent on a lot of factors. Uh, the carrier is only one of those factors. The internet access is another and your local network is also a factor. A typical VoIP provider SLA is usually in the 3.9 range of 9.99. Uh, this is due to new technology but also due to the fact that the it's a software based service and requires uh, definitely maintenance windows and so forth. Uh, for upgrades and changes as the service as the service and capabilities of VoIP changes over time. Also you have to think about consistency. Consistency is not really measured but it is an important thing to consider or rate your provider by. Um, basically this is do calls, uh, uh, local calls or long distance calls, do they sound the same? Uh, based on time of day do they sound the same? Basically, is your service consistent? Uh, mix that with reliability and clarity, and you have a good gauge of your QoS or the quality of your overall uh, service. Uh, resilience, though, the next piece, resilience, is, is not strictly QoS, but I think it's important to have a uh, service that can be rerouted uh, when something unforeseen happens. It's not always the carrier or your ITSP going down uh, that causes a problem. Sometimes it might be a power outage, maybe a disaster at a location, a flood, fire, a wire, a wire gets cut, a service uh, offering in the facility is down. So it is very helpful to have a service uh, that can stay up and running since this does affect the uptime and, and the overall happiness of the customer. So let's talk about some common uh, problems that can affect QoS. So one is one-way audio or no-way audio. This is a very common issue that affects companies using VoIP. Uh, this issue is 99, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time caused by a firewall with poor or no SIP ALG or SIP awareness capability. 
Um, this is why bandwidth.com and other carriers have standardized on specifically tested application layer gateway firewall appliances. Examples, examples that we use would be Ingate uh, Separator or the Edgewater Networks Edgemark appliance. Um, also, uh, Echo is, is an issue that is usually attributed to voice over IP. I don't know if it should really be purely attributed to voice over IP since it really happens anytime uh, anytime audio is converted from its analog format to digital or from uh, uh, digital back to analog. So that time where where voice is being converted is when, uh, when echo can be uh, entered into the equation. Uh, the thing to remember is that's usually at either end, so that's either the, the PSTN end or the traditional voice end, or usually at the handset or if it's an analog phone system at, at whatever end it converts from digital to analog or from analog to digital. Uh, when you get echo, sometimes it doesn't have any delay, and that would sound kind of like a, a hollow room. So if you have, if you've ever experienced where you get a call and it sounds like the other person's in a very hollow room, maybe they're on speakerphone, uh, that is echo. It's just echo in the absence of delay. So delay makes it even worse. Delay means that you're going to hear your voice and then you're going to hear your voice again. So you're going to speak and then you're going to hear your voice later. Uh, that uh, the worse the delay, the farther the distance between your speaking voice and your and the return. So it's important to make sure that you tune out any delay in the network uh, to minimize the effect or the annoyance of of echo. Uh, clipping is a loss of parts of words usually caused by packet delay or packet loss. So choppy words caused by packet delay. Remember, if a packet or voice is delayed. Uh, too too long, then it, it's basically the same thing as losing the packet completely. Because of course, you're not going to want to play that audio clip later. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense to have that come in out of order. Uh, you wouldn't wor want words mixed up. So this is typically caused by packet loss or delay. So looking at your internet connectivity or routing on your local network. Robotic voice. Now this is usually caused by either the phone system or the carrier or a phone uh, trying to do what's called packet loss concealment. And, and, and packet loss concealment is a very good thing. If you're losing a few packets here and there, it kind of fills in that missing voice energy with the last good voice packet. Uh, now if you just drop one of those in, it kind of masks, uh, masks some packet loss but if you have too many packets in a row that are missing so you have extreme packet loss this will make the voice sound robotic uh, I think everybody's experienced that uh, before and it's very easy to, to kind of tune that out by trying to look at your circuit for packet loss also look at some routing on your network to find out if there's a packet loss at that environment so this works basically uh, if you have a bunch of packets that are lost it's bad but if you have a few packets it's a good thing to have packet loss concealment uh, so that is an important piece. So static or noise on the line, usually this is a hardware malfunction, uh, uh, but it does get confused with clipping. Sometimes if you're clipping a very small section, it might sound like you're getting uh, static or noise. Some people describe clipping as static or noise on the line because it could be a popping sound when you're only getting a part of a word that might sound like a pop, popping noise. So, uh, But static is, is typically just a loud noise on the line. This is always introduced when the call is analog. It cannot be introduced when the call is in its digital format. So when it's being tra traversed across the internet and sent to the carrier, it does not, be, it cannot be introduced in this point. Uh, remember, digital service must be um, decompiled and then the, the static must be pushed into it and then recompiled again. So that's not possible. It comes from either uh, whichever end is analog. So typically the handset if you're on a VoIP system and at the other end from the PSTN. So those are the two areas to look at. If you're looking at the digital side of the service then you're pretty much wasting time. You need to be looking at the analog sides because that's where static or noise on the line is introduced.